Okay, so first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy I can be here with you today to, to host the, the last 20 minutes on the conference. I hope that you are not deadly tired so you can, I can still catch a, f a few minutes of your attention. And, uh, well, uh, the thing that, well, I would like to start with something uh, to say that I believe, no, no, I'm sure that actually this, that this location here, that every one of you here is either preparing or already executing some master plan to make your service or product like dominate the planet, make an impact, change the industry. Any of you with some ambitions here, raise your hand. One, two, so, no, no, no. So what, what, that is, what are you doing here, actually? Okay, so I, I will start again. I believe that most of you actually have a plan to revolutionize or change or redefine the industry that you are currently working, uh, working in. And I will tell you why. I believe that, that you know, first of all, probably one of the most ambitious people from the region came, came here to this great location. But um, the second reason, very also very important, is that actually a lot of things around us is being redefined. We basically live in times of, redefin of redefinition of almost everything. From very simple and very obvious things that we do just every day, we, we do it, we keep doing them, but, a little, but just a little bit different. Stuff like making notes. Who's making notes like this, rather than like this? <laughs> just guess. What, what are you doing here? <laughs> anyway, uh, calling a taxi is like, it's again the same taxi, but it's done a little bit different. Calling is the same as it was before, but a little bit different with a uh, great uh, Air Air Airbnb app. It's all in our worlds, it's a little bit different. So building businesses on trying to redef redefine, on redefinition of something that exists so far is one of the very good strategies and something that works pretty well and, uh, and with a little bit of risk. And the same was behind Audioteca. What we actually tried to do, we wanted to redefine this. What is this? It's, it's a, uh, uh, unfortunately I can't hear what you say because of the noise, but yes, this is reading a book. And, uh, of course, this picture is a little bit overemphasized in a certain way. But we wanted to change this into this. So you could take your favorite book, or rather for your favorite story, to your car. We managed to put our app on the dashboards of most of the new internet-connected cars. On the run, on the mobile, to make the, the great value of the books, the great value of the stories, of, the, of, of podcasts, of any other spoken word, word content, to take it with us and, and enjoy it in a way uh, we live today. And how we live today. We we'll live uh, mobile, we we'll live uh, on the go, we we'll live, we're constantly, we're still constantly busy. But all the time, the values, the, the, the knowledge, the content that is hidden in the books will be very, very valuable to, to, to most of the users. That was our belief. We launched Audioteca because we believe it can make people smarter a little bit. You can listen to a book and be smarter than your colleague from work. Do you agree? Is it valuable? I think it's, most, for most of us, probably yes. We do Audioteca to make you more effective. You can actually make, a, make, 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 make running and listening to your, to, 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 you know, to your favorite book or to your favorite podcast. And you can also basically be more, more entertained or better entertained or basically more happy. So. This is, this is what we do at Audioteca, and this is why we do it. And of course, we try to do it global, uh, which is the subject of, the, of, of my presentation today. But uh, the problem is that I will totally, but totally disappoint you in this because I have no idea how to actually make a global business. And uh, I have no idea if Audioteca is a global business. This is my map today and showing the countries and languages where we sell our audiobooks this, uh, today. But to be able to tell you how, to, how Audioteca was built into a global company, I have to first understand how do you guys understand global company? Do I have a global company if I'm selling my service in, I don't know, five countries? Can I call myself global then? 10 countries? 50 countries? Maybe to build a global company means that I have like an office in five countries, 
10 countries? 50 countries? I, I, I don't know. Maybe keeping in a global company means that I'm, I'm, I'm hiring people in, in more than 5, 10, 50 countries. Or languages. Audioteca is actually having not that many offices, but we are a lang language first, first company. So I think that we've never managed to build a global company, and we never will be a global company. And I think that, uh, how to say, focusing your time and trying to understand and adopt certain strategies to build less or more global makes zero sense. If you want to run a business, just run your business. And if, and if you find the strategy of user, reaching out to users outside your, your location, uh, it's fine. But I don't think there is any sense in, in calling our, ourselves or trying to call ourselves global or global. The business today, because of the world is totally flat, is the same, the global business and the local business is actually, this is this all the time the same business. And this global is, I think, the buzzword, which is a little bit old fashioned. And as I said, nobody really knows what does it mean to be a global company. And um, what, what I prefer to call myself Audioteca is rather call myself multilocal because we actually operate in so many languages with so many different cultures that, as I said, we'll never will be able to build a global company, maybe multilocal. But not to le leave you like totally disappointed and, uh, and uh, with, the, with the actually story how to build a global company, I will try to come up with like a free, simple, a few simple rules how I actually managed to follow for the last, uh, for the last couple of years to actually be, make Audioteca be available for as many users in as many countries as possible. So how to do it, how, much, how, I, how, how I was trying to do. The first thing was rule the locals. I'm putting the locals in this quotation marks because I, a few minutes ago I said there is no difference between global and local. But f forget it for a minute. Whatever you do, wherever, wherever you come from, one of your languages, regions, countries, or target groups should be something that you 100% rule. Launching any startup, any new service, especially online or mobile, or mobile, mobile service, you'll experiment a lot. So your, your, your local layer, your local, lo your local market, you have to absolutely rule it and turn it into your experiment field. Because you will be experimenting a lot. You will be making a lot of mistakes. And in your local country, your local language, or your, let's say, local target group, you have to make your users love you to forgive you all the mistakes. You have to make your partners love you to, to forgive your mistakes because you have to get strength, get muscles to actually be able to win the markets, win the languages, win the locations, win the, win the target groups, which are not that easy to get as your, as your place of your origin. So that was rule number one. Make sense? Yes, I don't know. Maybe you say it's not, maybe not, I don't know. That was, rule, rule number, that was rule number one. Rule number two. Beautiful two. Who can tell me who is this guy? That's difficult. Who climbs in this room? Nobody. I climb a lot. So maybe this analogy comes from my climbing experience. But I will give you a hint. What is this? Except it's a mountain. I know it's mountain, but which mountain? I can't hear at all. Anyway, uh, this is really, this is the mountain. This is Mount Everest, actually. This guy was the first guy who climbed it up. But this is not Hillary. Hillary, the guy from New Zealand, was, was he's famous for being the first man climbing Mount Everest. But he did it with this guy. This is Sherpa, Tenzing Norgay. He is someone from Nepal living there. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and uh, Hillary would never climb up Mount Everest, not w without this guy. I don't know if this guy was carrying his backpack or he was carrying himself uh, to, to, climb, to climb the whole, the whole mountain, but they did it together. So accomplishing any dangerous or difficult goal, like, which is similar to, you know, to reaching, a, to making your position and then not just launching a service, but really like getting a substantial market share on a new market, new target group, new language, is a challenge, and you will not do it if you not use a Sherpa power. That's called like, but, but as I said, I climb, so I use this climbing analogy. But this means nothing else like building an alliance, looking for partners, smart partners, which, can, which actually somehow can help you, give you some insight on the local uh, be user behaviors, open up the, some markets, give some marketing hints, etc. 
I, I follow this from the very, very beginning. And uh, in every country, I have different type of partners, so I need, which requires a lot of flexibility uh, and, and, and op being open-minded to strike such a deals. But, uh, but this is the Sherpa powers is helping me from the very beginning of Audioteca. And I think it's one of my key rules that, uh, that I can recommend no, no matter how, what business you run. So Sherpa power actually rules. Here in Germany, for example, we launched a few months ago and uh, we launched with Mobilcom de Beetel, which is, uh, which is one of the big uh, mobile carriers in Germany, which is actually bounding audio tech service with the, with the, with the Mobilcom tariffs, etc. This is a great ally. This is great Sherpa, who is helping me understand the market and giving me extra power to reach my, to climb my, my mountain, meaning reaching a substantial market share here in Germany. Okay, number three. What is this guy doing? Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm asking the questions, but actually I can't hear your, your voice from the audience. This guy is making some focus. Audioteca is, is, a, is a pretty, pretty, pretty young company. Uh, I mean, not, maybe not young for the startup. We have like almost six years already. But uh, what helped us a lot, especially in building an online business in many, many countries, was a focus. For, for the first time, when we launched Open Czech Republic as our first, first country, we got kind of excited about how easy it is to open up new country. However, it turned around, and, and what we did as a next step, we tried to open up service in you know, as many languages as possible. But what it turned around, that we cannot go wide and deep at the same time. You can go either wide or either deep. So basically, we have to like refocus and actually we pick the countries where we want to really change our just being online and so having like a serious market share, substantial number of users, and of course, substantial revenues, and of course, substantial EBITDA, and all that you know, financial important uh, KPS. So focus is something that, uh, that also is, 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 a, is, a, is, a, is a very important role in, uh, in, in trying to build something which is bigger than just one, uh, one, uh, one, uh, just one country. You know, and uh, because this is like very end of the of the conference, and this what I'm going to say on the last slide, I I say very often at the end of any speech that I'm taking, especially it's not very, very it's more philosoph philosophical than than very concrete knowledge. But I just love to tell it every every time I have a chance to share it. This is hard, and uh, I I believe that basically whatever you do. You actually have to really like what you do, and you, if you do, if, if it's if it's your business, it's more easy to like it. If you're working for someone else, try to find as much enjoyment in it as possible. My story with Audioteca is totally, I, if, if, totally strange. I mean, it's it's a little bit crazy because I always wanted to be a rock star. Believe me or not, and but don't worry, I will not sing today, because I cannot sing, I cannot dance. I'm just practically a person of zero talents, but I love to be on the stage, you know? And, and somehow following this, you know, kind of love to show business and being on the stage, I am ended up on the stage today, for example, and I really enjoy it. I'm not singing, I'm doing audiobooks, but, you know, I just following something from a, consequently for many, many, many years, and actually brought me to, in a pretty strange way, brought me to certain stages. I created my own show business, my audiobook show, show business, which is basically you know, the, 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 the best example that if you follow what you really like, if you really follow what you really love, so in a certain way, maybe in a really unexpected way, like it was with myself and audiobooks, can, can make you make great things in your life. Thank you very much. Marcin, thank you very much. Um, any questions from the audience? Raise your hands if you have any question. Oh yeah, and please do me a favor. Tell us very briefly who you are, where you come from. Uh, Bartosz from Sorry, Warsaw. Bartosz. Oh, now I can hear you. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I'm a researcher of uh, e-commerce and also lawyer. And uh, can you tell us which market was the most difficult to enter? Uh, there was actually hmm, any French people on the on this on the audience in the audience, <laughs> so I cannot answer the question. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, yes, actually, France it was and is still the most difficult uh, country for us. But we basically have no uh, substantial success. 
um, despite that we're trying for the last two years. Uh, despite we have like a great catalog, catalog of content. Uh, despite we have like a pretty nice uh, coverage in terms of uh, marketing. And, uh, and, and France was, was still is our, our, our biggest, biggest failure because, I don't know, because French people are maybe, you know, more traditional in terms of books. And this, this, this is painful, especially uh, France was the second country outside Poland that I decided to go. France is a country of books. Like, I don't know, Holland is a country of painters. Like, Italy is a country of architect architecture. France is basically in a great publishing market, over 3.5 3 billion uh, euros in value. Uh, e great e-commerce, which is like 65 billion euros. Uh, a lot of, you know, huge smartphone penetration, like 50%. Uh, a lot of huge internet penetration, 60%. But still, there is something that in, in their culture that we cannot understand. As a, as, as, a, as a company from Poland, and we didn't learn, we put it out in, a, in, a, in the French kind of, I don't know, uh, atom in the DNA of our company, and, and yes, yeah, so France is, reminds our most difficult, uh, difficult uh, country. So there was a question? Oh yeah, here we go. Well, uh, that was actually my first question to, uh, to make, but uh, I invented another one. Uh, so how you decide which country to enter in? Okay, uh, this is also a very, very good question. I will go back to, uh, if I, no, I'll come out back. The slide with the focus guy was something that was, uh, this, is the, this rule did not appear, that didn't, I didn't know about it. I learned it. I started with opening countries like crazy with totally zero analysis and uh, with a lot of opportunities. Just opening up, opening up because it was easy. And, and uh, for a few months, I was seeing actually no results in the revenue. And I realized it's not enough to, you know, to just open up and, and, and see, the, see, the, see the thing growing. So we had to like, start more thinking more and to trying to put certain, certain logics in it. And I can tell you why I launched the first country, which was Czech Republic. I, I chose it on purpose because it was close to Poland. And I, my first office in Czech Republic is, was in Ostrava, which was only three hours and a half by train. So it was possible for me to be there if something goes really wrong on the next day in the morning. And, 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 and very, very cheaply. Yes, if I was decided to start with in Brazil, and uh, we have now an office in Sao Paulo, but you know, going there is not that cheap. It's neither cheap nor quick. So, you know, so, so Czech Republic was actually the first country. And then uh, was France, which was a mistake. And then actually we started to make like a big tables with big numbers and tried to make that, uh, but that this isn't really, really like uh, number driven. So what we do, we just look at the at a certain coefficients index that at this moment has like 12 index, different indexes and we're trying to do you know, the best choice based on that. And we, do, and we do one country, country per country. So you know, if, I, if we decided uh, the second half last year that Germany is our focus country, we'll do Germany until we have this country set up. The local with, a lot of, with a five people uh, on the ground, with, a, with positive EBITDA, etc. We'll not start you know, to think about other country if we do not succeed in, 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 in Germany. So we did like a certain qualification of countries. We grouped them into stars, developing incubation and future countries. And we just very, very con control ourselves not to go beyond that plan. Because as I said, you cannot go wide and deep at the same time, unless you have unlimited number of money, which probably is not the case. It's not my case for sure. Do you maybe have a question to the audience? <laughs> Okay, so again, who is listening to audiobooks again? I have to count it. One, two, one, two three, four, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, and who can tell me which is the most uh, obvious use case? Uh, most often, most, most, most often use case for you to listen to audiobooks? Who can, who can join me on the stage here? Now? Anybody? No. Okay, sorry. Who, who can tell me who can join me here on the stage and tell me what the most frequent use case for listening to, to books? So how do you listen to audiobooks? That's the question. Yes. Simple terms. Driving the car. Okay, very good. And any, any other case? I will walk around. It's running. Yeah. It's running, very good. And anything else? Falling asleep. Falling asleep, very good. Okay. This is my case too. 
Okay. I'm, 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 I'm asking this on purpose because uh, for the, it changed. The, the audiobook listening changed dramatically. The use cases changed dramatically for the last couple of months. Because the, now uh, it used to be driving, the most frequent use case, and now it's listening at home. Anybody listening to audiobooks at home? Rarely. Ah, okay. No, no, there's a few. This is, this, is, this is something that changed dramatically, as I said, because more and more people are listening to audiobooks at, at home. So that was my little research here, if it makes sense and if, if it can be really true. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much for joining. Thank you.